Hello friends, today I shall tell you design of continuously reinforced concrete pavement or CRCP. These pavements may be provided with elastic joints or without joints, but generally they are provided without joints. If transverse joints are provided, then they are cut in the full width and the reinforcement runs continuously. And because these continuous reinforcements are provided in CRCP, there is no need to provide double bars. These pavements are preferred on corridors with very heavy truck traffic condition or on expressways. And because there are no joints, so riding quality is much better than jointed plain cement concrete pavement. And maintenance cost is low because there is no joint. And the design life of these pavements is considered to be 30 to 40 years. Design is similar to what IRC 58 has suggested for jointed plain cement concrete pavement. Base and sub base layers are provided as per IRC 58. And this, the typical cross section of a CRCP is that this is a subgrade. Above that, you provide the base course. Now, this base course generally laid in two layers. One is GSB, which you call the sub base, and this is the drainage layer. Drainage layer can be as per grading 5 and 6 given in table 400.1 of MORTH specifications. And this GSB layer can be of any grading type 1 to 4 of the same table. Above that, you have the base. Now, this base can be either DLC or it can also be bitumen layer, bitumen cores. And above that, you provide the slab. That is your payment qualities. Concrete slab, the thickness of this slab generally varies from 250 to 300 millimeter for the traffic conditions generally prevailing in the country. But this is to be designed as per IRC 58 for XLR spectrum. And within this slab, you provide the reinforcement here. This is the reinforcement in the longitudinal direction as well as in the transverse direction. Design of CRCP basically means design the pavement as per IRC 58 and then design these reinforcement. If the base is of bituminous layer, then in that case, rather than providing directly PQC over DLC, we provide a geogrid layer here of 5 mm thickness. And above that, we provide the pavement quality concrete of desired thickness. So after you design the rigid pavement as per IRC 58, and I, as I told you, generally 250 to 300 millimeter thickness is sufficient for the traffic conditions prevailing in the country. If you want to see the design procedure, I have another video on design of rigid pavement. You can watch it. The next step is to provide the reinforcement, design of reinforcement. So one is longitudinal reinforcement. Longitudinal reinforcement is provided to counter the tensile stresses developed because of moisture and temperature. And when you design this long term reinforcement, the total amount of reinforcement required depends upon three parameters. One is the crack spacing. To minimize crack spalling, the maximum spacing between cracks should be less than 2.5 meter. And to minimize the possibility of punch out, this the minimum spacing between the crack should be 1.07 meter. The second is that allowable crack width should not exceed 1 millimeter. And the third point is that the steel stress should be taken 75% of the yield stress of the steel to prevent the plastic deformation. And based on these three considerations, what IRC 118 suggests that the amount of this longitudinal reinforcement is generally 0.6 to 0.85% of the cross-sectional area of the 
कॉन्क्रीट स्लैब और यू कैन से पॉइंट सेवन परसेंट ऑफ द क्रॉस सेक्शन एरिया ऑफ द स्लैब दैट इज द अमाउंट ऑफ इन्फोर्समेंट रिक्वायर्ड एंड वट आई आर सी वन वन एट सजेस्ट दैट एफ ई फोर वन फाइव ग्रेड स्टील कैन बी यूज डिफॉर्म बार्स ऑफ एफ ई फोर वन फाइव और यू कैन से टी एम टी एफ ई फाइव हंड्रेड ग्रेड स्टील कैन बी यूज फॉर री एनफोर्समेंट दीज बार्स आर प्लेस्ड एट वन थर्ड डेप्थ ऑफ द स्लैब then another one is spacing of these bars spacing of these bars should be at least 2.5 to 3 times the maximum size of aggregate and based on the type of aggregate or size of aggregate which is recommended for m40 design what irc scores suggest that the maximum spacing should not be more than 230 mm and it should be at least 100 mm or 2.5 times the maximum size of aggregate used in the design of the mix that is how the long tunnel bars are designed then the transverse reinforcement transverse reinforcement are provided this is a transverse transverse reinforcement this one this is a long tunnel reinforcement transverse reinforcement is provided throughout the width of the pavement slab and the basic criteria of designing transverse reinforcement is that the friction provided by the base layer should be equal to the contraction force developed in the concrete and the equation which is used to calculate percentage of transverse steel is gamma c w s into f upon 2 into fs now here this gamma c is the unit weight of concrete w s is the width of the pavement f is a factor which is called the friction factor and this is fs is allowable working stress in steel which is taken as 70 75% of the yield stress yield strength of the concrete now this friction factor f will depend upon the type of material beneath the slab and irc 118 provides a table which indicates the value of f for surface treatment this value is 2.2 for lime stabilized layer or asphalt stabilized layer or even cement stabilized layer its value is 1.8 for river gravel it is 1.5 for crushed stone 1.5 for sand stone it is 1.2 and for natural subgrade which is very rare case it is 0.9 so you can choose the value of f from this table depending upon the condition of the base the maximum spacing which is suggested for these reinforcement is 610 mm maximum spacing given in irc code is 610 mm and these reinforcements are kept at least 500 mm away from the transverse construction joint so that is how you design a cement a continuously reinforced concrete pavement so you start with irc 58 and end with the designing of the steel for longitudinal direction and transverse direction let me take just quickly one example let us say design a crcp for a 260 mm thick concrete pavement now this 260 mm is coming from irc 58 so you have the site conditions you have the traffic load spectrum carry out design as per irc 58 250 mm is the thickness which is required for the design 10 mm extra is added to take care of texture and wear and tear because of beam so total thickness of the pavement is 260 mm width of the pavement is 7 m 
with a longitudinal joint that means the width of the pavement or the width of the slab is 3.5 meter. How much reinforcement is required in longitudinal direction and in transverse direction? So for longitudinal steel design, let us say we take 0.7 percent of the section of the pavement slab. So it is 350, 350 centimeter is the width of the pavement into 26 centimeter is the depth multiplied by 0.7 percent, 0.7 upon 100. This is 63.7 centimeter square. And let us consider that there are 20 millimeter diameter TMT bar with FE 500 grade of steel. So, cross sectional area of each bar is 5 by 4 into 2 centimeter, that is 2 square. So, this is pi. pi or 3.14 centimeter square. So, a number of bars required for longitudinal reinforcement is 63 upon 7, 63.7 upon 3.14 that is 20.3 or let us say 21 bars. So, 21 bars will be required. So, again leaving 10 centimeter. Now, this is the slab and you are providing the long tunnel bar here. So, leaving this as a 10 centimeter on this side and 10 centimeter on this side. Then, what will be the spacing? What will be the spacing of these bars? So, spacing will be 350 centimeter is the total width of the pavement, leaving 10 centimeter on either side divided by 21 minus 1, 16.5 millimeter centimeter, 165 millimeter. So these bars will be provided at a spacing of 165 millimeter. That is the design of long tunnel reinforcement. Similarly, you can design the transverse reinforcement and as I told you the percentage of transverse steel is given by this equation. Let us say this is Pt is gamma C into Ws into F upon 2 Fs. Gamma C is the density of concrete, let us assume density of concrete to be 24 kilo Newton per meter cube. Ws is the width of the pavement that is 350 or 3.5 meter. F is a factor and because you designed the pavement as per IRC 58, 58 suggests use of DLC and therefore for this base it can be taken as 1.8 from the table and this Fs, Fs is allowable strength or stress in the steel. So, if you are considering TMT bar of FE 500, that means its yield strength is 5000 kg per centimeter square or you can say 500,000 kilo Newton per meter square. So, we take 75 percent of that. We take 75 percent of this as the Fs value. So, calculate what is the percent Pt. 24 into 3.5 into 1.8 divided by 2 into 500,000 into 0.75 that is a 75 percent of the yield stress multiplied by 100. This is what 
is the amount of transverse steel. This is 0.02016%. And the spacing between these bars is given by this equation. Y is equal to AS that is area of steel into 100 divided by Pt which you calculated from this equation into D. D is the slab thickness 26 centimeter in our case. Now this area of steel let us say 12 millimeter diameter bar. So area will be pi by 4 into 12 square or you can say 1.131 centimeter square. Pt is 0 0.02016, D is 260 millimeter. So now you can calculate this value as 1.131 into 100 divided by 0 0.02016 into 26. Now this is 216 centimeter. That is the spacing. What IRC 118 suggests that this spacing of transverse steel should be in the range of 30 to 90 centimeter. So let us say 60 centimeter. Let us say 60 centimeter. So transverse bar should be provided 12 millimeter TMT bar with FE 500 grade steel at a spacing of 60 centimeter. That is how you design a CRCP. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you have any question, you can write.